All right, y'all. So tonight we're going to knock out 6C. So 6C is going to deal with what we call the normal distribution. So definition for us real quick. So the normal distribution So the normal distribution y'all is a symmetric bell-shaped distribution. So it's a symmetric bell-shaped Distribution with a single peak. So what they mean by a single peak is it got one hump. Okay. So it's peak. So it's peak corresponds to the mean, median, and mode of the distribution. So it's going to correspond to uh, mean, median, and mode of the distribution. And if you remember, the mean was the average of all the data, the median was the middle number of the data, and then the mode was the data point that happened the most. So to be a nice normal distribution, all those are about the center point of the actual um, chart you're going to get, okay? Now, it's variation. is characterized by the standard deviation so the standard deviation of the distribution Okay, so we got what we call conditions for a normal distribution. So I'm going to kick that just a little to the right. So the conditions for a normal distribution. I know that's it. So we got four conditions that qualify any distribution as a normal distribution, okay? So condition one, most of the data values are going to be clustered near the mean. So most of the data will be clustered near the mean. So what they say, if, if I got a mean of 50, then what they're saying is most of my data is probably going to be around 48, 47, to about what, 52, 53 range. It's going to be really close to that 50 there, okay? Now, you might have some of the outliers, but they will be far off on the end, okay? And um, when you got most of your data, 
closer near the mean, that means you'll have that one big peak on this data, okay? So number two, the data values are spread evenly around the mean, making it symmetric. So the data values are spread evenly around the mean. So evenly, what they're saying is, hey, I might have a few values smaller than my mean, which means I'll have a few values that are going to be higher than my mean. They're going to sort of spread out symmetrically on both sides. Larger deviations from the mean are increasingly rare. So larger deviations from the mean are increasingly rare. So what that means, the further you get away from that mean is less likely for the data points to be in those ranges, okay? And that's what causes those little tails to happen. The fewer dots you got or data points as you go out away from your mean is gonna cause it to slow down. Because remember, what we're looking at on these is the frequency that something happens, okay? So then our number four on this, individual data values result from a combination of many different factors. So on a normal distribution, you can get them data values by doing the means to them. You might do some of the mode stuff and see how many times these data are hidden. Or even the uh, median, because you'll notice the numbers in the middle are gonna happen a lot more than those numbers out there on the edges. So a good normal distribution is gonna be like a bell-shaped curve and the mean, median, mode are going to be the center of it, okay? So if you want to give me a couple scenarios and we're going to determine if it might be a normal distribution, okay? Well, let me let one in, I see another one coming in. I'm going to try to catch them as they come. <laughs> and if y'all got questions online, just unmute and ask us. Okay? I should be able to hear y'all also. So they want to say, which of the following would you expect to have a normal or nearly normal distribution? So we'll just say, which should have a normal distribution. So they're giving me two cases. Case one are scores on a very easy test. So scores on a very easy test. And then B, foot length of a random sample of adult women. So the foot length of a random sample of 
of adult women. So, what I said on part A on this one is I didn't feel part A would be normal because of this word, easy, easy test. If it's an easy test, I'm expecting a lot more scores to be in the upper range than I would be in the lower range, okay? So this would be what you might call a left tail. Because what's going to happen, if I've got a mean that's sitting at about 90 because it was a really easy test, well, tests only go to 100. Yeah. Right? So here's your 100, which means you got 89 and below are coming this way. So this curve will be short on this side, but y'all this side, it's gonna come in, it's gotta catch all these underscores. Although these ones are rare, it's still what we call a left tail because most of your dad is gonna to be to the left of that 90, okay? So I didn't think that was too symmetrical. So I thought that would be probably a no, okay? Now, adult women know. I don't even know what about seven foot, about seven inch. Ain't that about a one, seven, eight inch, maybe nine. But your data is going to be really congested in them areas, right? So if the average woman has, say, a uh, six, we'll say that the average was about eight. That sounds like a good shoe size, right? <laughs> but what's going to happen with this curve? North Brook Illinois. Um, but I would expect a lot of my data to be around the average for the women. You might have a few outliers with really big feet or some with really small feet if they do the Chinese binding or something to their feet. But on average, I would think a lot of the women would be around the same range, which would give it more of a bell shape, symmetric, because both sides are the same, okay? All right, so let's look at what we call the 68, 95, 99.7 rule for a normal distribution. So this is called the 68, 95, 99.7 rule for a normal distribution. So y'all wanna draw me a nice bell curve again. Okay. <laughs> right in the center is my mean. So let's see what we're going to look. This is one axis, my x axis, or my horizontal axis. And then you'll have a vertical axis. The vertical axis is your frequency. So your frequency is how many times does that data point hit me, okay? Now, what they're doing to get this 68, 95, 99 is right here and to the left, this is one standard deviation. And I don't remember if I showed y'all the sample, but that would be a positive, almost looks like a sideways B or something. That's called row, I think, but it looks like a, well, a sideways six or something. Now over here would be minus one standard deviation, which would be a negative sigma. 
So if we were to draw vertical lines where we got one standard deviation on either side. Now remember, standard deviations, when you figured that out last week, standard deviation was how far on average are my data points from that mean. And that's the one where we added them up and took the square roots to get those numbers. <laughs> um, but between one standard deviation on either side of that mean, this will hold 68% of my data will fall into those categories. It'll be between one standard deviation and one standard deviation on the positive side. 68% of my data points are gonna be right in that little section, okay? And then you come out to a uh, two standard deviations away. And this one over here would be minus two standard deviations. So that would be a negative two, and this would be a two, okay? Well, guess what? Two standard deviations, between two standard deviations on either side of my mean will be 95% of my data. So 95% of the data will be 95%. So what they're doing from here, we said was what, 68? Mm -hmm. From two standard deviations either way was 95% of your data points, which means 95 out of 100 points are going to be within two standard deviations from my mean. And then finally, you get to the edges here. And it would still be the same. Um, they would all be the same distance in between them. But this would be minus three standard deviations and positive three standard deviations. So that would be three, and this would be a negative three. But y'all, between negative three standard deviations and positive three standard deviations is 99.7% of my data. Which is pretty much all your data points. So they're saying if we can find our mean and we can find our standard deviations, then we can figure out how much of the data is in each range, okay? Which means you've only got 0.3% that could be further than three standard deviations, okay? So what they're saying on a normal curve, it's very rare to have outliers that far, okay? All righty, so I'm gonna write out what this is basically saying, okay? So what this is telling us is that about 68%. Oh, here's some rumors. And that's about what, two thirds? 68% of something, about two thirds of it. Um, of the data points. Fall within one standard deviation of the mean. And if you remember, the mean is the average, okay? Well, then we said about 95%, and precisely it would be 95.4% of the 
but we don't worry about that 44 on these. Um, but 95% of the data points fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And then we said finally, 99.7% falls within three standard deviations. Of the mean. Okay, so that means if this was like 10 scores and I did have a nice bell shaped average on everything, they had a 70 here, and this went down to 100, and my low scores were maybe a 40, that would tell me how much of my students I would expect to have the A or right around my average on the mean to take. So usually you want a C average on your mean on the test, which means you'll have a few going towards the A's, right? Here's your B's and probably a few A's. Over here, you might have a few low C's and D's, and then you get to the S. You want those S and A's to be smaller than your averages on those? Or they'll say, hey, you're testing too easy or too hard or something. You know? So, All righty, so let's see. We're going to do a little example here. So I'm going to read a lot of this and then sort of write what I need. But it says vending machines can be adjusted to reject coins above and below certain weights. Back in my day, they would put one called slugs in there. Y'all heard of those? So that's probably why they did all this because we were bad back in the 80s. <laughs> um, so the weights of legal U.S. quarters are normally distributed with a mean of 5.67 grams. So we got a mean equals 5.67 grams. A standard deviation, so standard deviation is 0 0.0700 grams. And I'll tell you, these zeros are just placeholders for the accuracy to do it. All right, so here's the thing. If a vending machine is adjusted, to reject quarters that weigh more than 5.81 grams, so the vending machine is adjusted um, to reject quarters that weigh more. Then 5.81 grams and less than 5.53 grams what percentage of legal quarters will be rejected by the machine. So what percentage of legal quarters will be rejected?
So I'm just going to sort of figure this out. Remember, they said this is normally distributed. So if it's normally distributed, it's going to have that bell shape. They gave me the mean in the middle was what, 5.67 grams. So what we're going to do is see what adding each of these standard deviations does to this number. So first, I'm going to start out with, I'm going to go to the right side, okay? So to the right side, I'm going to figure out one standard deviation, which would be adding 0 0.07 to the 5.67. So 5.67 plus 0 0.0700 0 gives me 5.74. But notice I ain't made it far enough yet because they want me to see what happens at 5.81. So let's go another standard deviation and see what that gives me. So I will take the 5.74 now and add another 0 0.07 to it. When I add another 0 0.7, I now get 5.81. Well, guess what? 5.81 is the right number they gave me, right? So I know that the 5.81 is two standard deviations from my mean. So now to go this side, we're going to subtract the 0.07. So let's see what we are at a negative one standard deviation. I would take my 5.67, subtract 0 0.07. And at that point, I got a 5.6 or 5.60 if you wanted to go with accurate. But I'm still not far enough, right? Because they want me to start at a 5.53 on the low side. So let's take the 5.6 and subtract another 0.07. I'll look at that, I get 5.53. So that is 5.53. So it looks like my data is coming in from, here's one standard deviation to the left, here is two standard deviations to the left. To the right, here is a positive one, and then a positive two. So now you got to go back to that chart we just decided we made and figure out how much of my data is between here and here. So how much did we say was within two standard deviations of that mean? <laughs> Um, um, okay. So you're just looking at one of these three answers. Okay. So if you use one standard deviation, you'd have 68% of it, right? But y'all, we got two standard deviations. I got two standard deviations to the right. I got two standard deviations to the left. So since my data is falling in between two standard deviations, I got 95% of my data. So that would be 95%, okay? Oh, hold on, I think I wanna, I wanna pray that. So that's my good quarters, right? My good quarters are right here. I'm looking for the ones that are below 5.3 and higher than 5.81, right? So if 95% of these are good, then the bad quarters are going to be 100% minus the 95% good quarters. So you would have 100% minus the 95%. So what's that give me about 5%? So remember, the 95% was the good ones. Yeah. Ooh, almost, I didn't want to get y'all wrong on that. So they were looking for the bad quarter. So remember, that was anything less than 5.3 and anything greater than 5.81, that machine's going to reject them and go on, okay? It was always sad when your slugs came back to the change machine, right? <laughs> oh, 
And they really correspond to these deviations. But what if something's in between here? It's, it's in between one standard deviation and two standard deviations. So we're going to look at how to find those numbers that are not perfectly normally distributed, OK? Sort of get the feeling this class sort of like stats, right? <laughs> so these are what we call standard scores. So, and this is what I'm saying, it's the number of standard deviations a data value lies Um, above or below the mean. Okay, so standard score is also called a Z score. Okay, so to find our Z score, Z is going to equal your data value. Minus your mean. So you take the point minus whatever average you had for the mean, and we're going to divide that by the standard deviation. Okay, so it's the data value minus your average, all divided by your standard deviation. Now, if your data value If it is above the mean to the right, so above the mean, which is to the right, then you're going to have a, well, think about this. Here was my mean. If I was on this side, my Z scores are going to be positive because I got positive standard deviations. Okay. So then the scores are positive. Now, if it's below the mean, which would mean it's to the left of your mean. Then those these scores are, guess what? These ones were all negative coming to the left, okay? So then the z-scores are negative. Okay, so to the right of your mean is going to be positive because you're getting higher scores. To the left will be negative Z's because you're getting smaller scores than your mean, okay? So we're about to find some Z scores, okay, y'all? These ain't bad. They're not like that standard deviation last week. So here's an example. So they got an IQ test that is scaled so that scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100. So we got a mean of 100. A standard deviation of 15. They want me to find the standard scores. So find the standard scores 
which are my z scores, right? For IQ scores of 85, 100, and 125. So I got 85, 100, and 125. So we want to see how far are them scores away from my mean, okay? So if you could draw something like this, you got your little bell curve coming down. Your mean is sitting right in the middle at what do we have, 100? So anything to the left of that, we should get a negative Z score. Anything to the right, a positive Z score. So let's start with the 85. So here's my formula. It says take that data point, subtract the mean, divide by your standard deviations. So my data point is the 85 minus my mean, which is the 100. And then divide that by the standard deviation, which they gave me of 15. So I would expect this to be negative because 85 is on this side, right? So let's see what we get. So you're going to do 85 minus 100. All right, there gives you the negative. And then divide that by a positive 15. So when I do that, I get a negative one. So that means, that negative one means that is one standard deviation away from my mean, okay? Now, 86, 87, 88, and all those, those would have values that would be like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. The further out, anything less than 85 would be one point something. The smaller you get, okay? Now, 100. Well, how many standard deviations do y'all expect me to get with a score of 100? Zero, because look, my mean is 100. So if you're sitting on the mean, you don't have no standard deviations. So good job, because my data point would be 100 minus my mean, which was 100. All over 15. Well, hell, 100 minus 100 is a big zero. And zero divided by anything is definitely a zero. So if your score matches your mean, you have no standard deviations. You're the one they probably got the, that's probably where they got the bell shape from your scores, right? And then we got 125, which is on the right side of it. So we would expect a positive Z score. So that's going to give me what? 125 minus 100 divided by 15. You'll probably get a decimal on that, but that's what we want. So 125 minus 100 gave me 25. 25 divided by 15. I'm getting, uh, let me see how far did I round those. I just went two decimal places. So you should be getting 1.66666. I'm going to make that a 1.67. Now, Math Lab will usually tell you how far to go on those uh, decimals. It'll say round one or two or three or whatever. Um, so this means that this score is further than one standard deviation, but it's not quite to the two standard deviation. So it's sitting somewhere in between there. Well, it's actually at 60, so that'd be about two thirds of that would be where that next point would go, in between the one and the two, okay? So I would round up to the one to make the 1.67. Mm -hmm. I got the 1.67 1. 1. right uh -huh. here. So let me show you a trick. You see this mode? Okay. So y'all watch this. If you hit mode and it brings down normal, go down to where it says float and put that on a two. 
If you put that on two and clear your screen, now hit enter. It turns it into two decimal places. Okay. So did you see what I was doing? Um, hit your mode. Yeah, go mode. And this is it anytime you want to round stuff off. We're usually on, well, yours is, no, yeah. you done hit it then. So you done it. So you done did it. Okay. We go down to four. Mm -hmm. And then go over to two. Yeah, and it'll stay on that for every time. Right. Now, it's going to stay on that every problem you do, unless you go put it back on float. Okay. And then okay. float, you say, if I want to go three decimal points, I, I go to float, put three decimal Put three decimals, and then and and four, you put it on a four. Okay. What float does is it just gives you everything it can on the decimals. Okay, now after I hit, okay, I, I, I put two as my, um, uh, I, as my float. So then where do I, then how do I go back? You just hit. Go back to mode yeah. and put it back on float. Okay, go back to mode. Uh huh. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back. So it's still on normal, but it's stay, it'll stay on float, right? Yeah, it'll stay on float okay. by default. Now I want to go back to my original screen. Mm -hmm. right now, I hit. Oh, just quit the screen. Hit the second quit. Second yeah. mode. Okay. Boom, boom. Yeah. But hit second float first. Hit yeah. second. The two. Oh, two. Mode. Mode. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So go two first. Okay. Mm -hmm. To see what it says above mode is quit. Okay. But to get to quit, you gotta hit the blue button and then the button. Okay. Oh god. So I'll try to make a video of doing that kind of stuff. Yep. All right, so next we look at what we call percentiles. And that's what that sheet was I gave y'all. Okay. Got it. So y'all at home, I sent y'all an email while ago with this chart on it that I'll, I'll be using in a little bit for the Z-scores, okay? So percentiles. Well, sounds like someone listening to movies up here or something. Y'all hearing that? Now, if that was on our, I say that, say that problem was on our um, test, would, and we wrote 1.6, would we get it right? Or 1.666 or... Well, if you're doing it on math lab, it's going to tell you around this two decimal places, oh, three okay. decimal okay, places. Okay, that's, that's what I'm sure. That's where I've been messing up. It always will tell you. Look in the fine print under the answer blanks. It'll say like we want a fraction or an integer or a decimal or something. It'll so, sort of tell you how. So they tell me they want two decimal. So if they said they wanted three decimal places, I can go three decimal. Uh, that'll be a six six seven. Yeah, six six seven zero, mm -hmm. and it'll still be three yeah. places. Okay, mm -hmm. got it, got it. I'm sorry. All righty, so the percentile, this is the percentage of all data values in a data set that are less than or equal to it. So that are less than or equal to it. Now, if you get a data point that lies between two percentiles, we go with the lower percentile, okay? So I'll make a little star on that. So a data value that lies between two percentiles is said to lie in the lower percentile. All right, so at this point, we'll be using this chart. I sent y'all a nice full screen version of this in your email.
All right, so let me show you an example using that chart, okay? So y'all are probably doing pretty good in a stats class if you took one after this class. <laughs> if you're doing enough stats, y'all can find mean, median, mo. Um, all righty, so I'm going to read the main part of this and then write the gist of it. So cholesterol levels in men 18 to 24 years of age are normally distributed with a mean of 178. And a standard deviation of 41. So in what percentile, so here's the first one. In what percentile? Is a 20 year old man with a cholesterol level of 190. Well, I don't know much about cholesterol. Is that good or bad? <laughs> I never had a cholesterol check, I don't think. So I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> So y'all, what we want to do is find the Z-score, and then we're going to look on that chart I gave you and see what percentile corresponds to the Z-scores. Now, I will say this. If I'm normally distributed here, and my Z-scores are negative, it's going to be smaller percentages. At zero, you get 50% because half the data is on each side. And then as my data goes this way, my Z-scores are going to be positive, which means I'm going to have more area under that curve, okay? Especially if I'm over here, I pretty much got 99% or 100% of that, okay? So we want to look at what our Z-score is and then look on the chart to see what you get for the percentiles, okay? So we got 190. So y'all remember my formula? You take the data point. So the data point is 190. Minus my mean, so that was 178. Divided by the standard deviation, right? The yeah, 41. Standard, there you yeah, go. 41. Yeah, standard deviation. So remember, it's your data point minus your mean divided by your standard deviation. So that looks like it's going to be positive. So y'all, 190 minus the 178 is going to give me 12, and then 12 divided by 41, I'm getting a 0.2, I'll just round that two units like you're doing, I'm going to keep that a 0.29. Because if you look um, on here, you want to get as close to that 0.29 as you can get. Now remember, if I lie between two, I'm going to go with the lower one, right? So if you notice, it lists the percentiles, but what I'm looking at is the Z scores here. Mm -hmm. And let me find uh, 0.29 on the Zs. Maybe 0.279, then you got 0.30 after that. So in yeah, so it's going to be in between the 0.279 and the 0.305, right? Yeah, right. Because we got a 0.29. So y'all were looking on the chart. We use the 279. Um, so I used the 2.79, so that percentile would be. Look to the left. Uh oh, it'd be, it'd be 61. 61. So this has a percentile equal to. 61. Okay. So you have to have this chart. Oh, 
now, what are we looking at now? What's, oh, let me get part B up here, I guess. So we would say, um, what cholesterol level corresponds to the 90th percentile? So now they're going the other way. So what cholesterol level corresponds to the 90th percentile? So let's look for the 90th percentile, and that should be on there. Yep. So we're talking about 1.282. 1 1 1 so the Z score is all around that to say a 1.28. 1 1.2, okay, 1.28. And we could use a 1.3, some of them are using. Okay. So that means if I had a mean right here, my mean was what, 178? I am 1.28 standard deviations this way. So here's one standard deviation and two. So I'm somewhere in, in between. But remember, how much was each of these standard deviations? 41. So 41, this would be adding 41 plus 28% of another 41. So what I would do that, when I get my Z-score, I multiply that times the standard deviation. So 1.28 times my standard deviation, which was 41, that's going to give me 52.48. So y'all, I took the 1.28 multiplied by the 41, because this is telling me how far from my mean did this point end up? 52.48. Uh -huh, so 52.48. But remember, what I got to do to this 52.48 is now add it to my mean so that the total will be the sum. So I'm going to take the 178, which is my mean. I'm going to add the 52.48, which was how much deviation I had from my mean. So take that and add that to your 178. And I'm getting what, a 230.48. So, I'm thinking my poor guy's way over here. He might need some cholesterol medicine or something, right? He's, he's past one. He's almost at two standard deviations. So um, that might be a little high, I would think, because most of my data should be kicking me right in that center. So, so y'all notice the two things I did. I can find percentiles by finding my Z-score and then using the chart, converting that over. Um, or... If I know the percentiles, I can find how much cholesterol the guy had because I know it's mean and I know the standard deviations. So what you got to look at is those Z scores. Since everybody ain't perfectly one standard deviation or two standard deviations, the Z scores sort of account for everything in between there. Point. Five standard deviations. For a so. twenty-year-old man, I got to do it. That's the start of scores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, twenty-year-old, yeah. yeah. It just real. I guess I guess they just saying this to make it make another number. Well, place. this poor fellow might be pretty old. Yeah. <laughs> a twenty-year-old, he's got one ninety. <laughs> Where did the forty-one come from? But maybe we get nurses in here one day. They don't know all that, right? Mr. Rathbone. All right, so let me check something out real quick. I think I thought, let me see. Oh, 
think I'm just getting right. So I think what's next after 6C, what we'll get into next is 7A. And I think that deals with probabilities, like what's the probability of rolling one on a six-sided dice? What's the probability of rolling a two or something? Um, so we're looking at probabilities in the next class. And I'm thinking I'm going to try to do some support videos for that part of it. I do, I think one of the supports is converting fractions and reducing fractions. So let me see what I got happening here. Oh, I hear dad. Let's see. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't hear no one because y'all, I think, are y'all unmuting y'all's microphone when y'all talk to me? I heard her whenever she asked the question. Oh, I'm barely hearing you. I probably need to turn my volume up. Uh, I'm going to bring my laptop next class. I'll bring my laptop in here because I know I can hear good on this. These computers in here, I'm not sure. They're not giving me a volume option. Um, so I will definitely try to bring my laptop next time because I can hear y'all and y'all can hear me a lot better. Um, so, did anyone have questions online or in class? Okay, um, I, I got a question from the homework, actually. Well, let me see what you got. Okay. It says, okay, the college exam is this area that the need is 60. So, this was six. So, this is today. Can I write this up here? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, y'all, this, this is like question number six on 6C homework I'm getting asked here. So, let me see. So the scores on a psychology exam are normally distributed with a mean of 62. It's 60, right? Uh, so 62. I thought it was 60. Is it 62? Uh, 62. Okay. And a standard deviation of four. 62. Okay, got that. Right. A failing grade on the exam was anything two or more standard deviations yeah. below the mean. So if you failed. Yeah. You were, whoops. If you failed, you were two standard deviations. Two or more standard deviations from the mean. What was the cutoff? For failing score. So what cut off for a failing score? All right, so let me give you this. <coughs> and then I'll read the second part of that. Okay. So basically, I've got me a bell-shaped curve sitting over mm -hmm. here. And I know at the moment my mean is at 62. So what they're saying, now I'm not going to the right side of this, Emma, because anything to the right is going to be passing for sure. We're worried about what's happening to the left side. What did they consider failing this test? So two standard deviations from the mean. So 62 Minus four would give me one standard deviation, which would be what, 58? Mm -hmm. Two standard deviations would be subtracting another four mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. So if you subtract another four from 58, 54. you're going to get 54, 54, which tells me any score 54 or less is a failing grade. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what they wanted was what's the cutoff? For my failing grades. Now I put 54 down here. Okay. Then it says simplify your answer. Huh? See, I had 54 and then it said wrong. Oh, well, click this. That's the right answer. If you click it, you had a 68, it said. Okay, I had 68. Okay, so mm -hmm. I wrote it wrong. Again. And then let's see what's the next question. Approximately what percentage of students okay. failed? Okay. Okay, I never put this. Okay, so I wrote 68, so I, I went the wrong way. Right. 
So approximately what? I don't. Oh, yeah, because you went, to I went 60. I went, yeah. yeah. I went the wrong way. Okay. Wrong way. Yeah. So approximately what percentage? Uh, what did I say? Failed? Yeah. So here's the question. How much of my data did we say was in between two standard deviations of that mean? 68. Well, 68 was one standard deviation, 95. Yeah. So we know so we know there's 95% data in here. So what's left is what? 5%, right? But 5% is the little bit on this tail and the little bit on this tail. 2.5. So I would say 2.5%. So y'all with me? We, we knew that two standard deviations had 95% of the data in between it, which left me 5% for the two tails. But I'm only going up to one of my tails. So we had to divide that by the side we didn't use. So both those tails are symmetrical. So he divided by two. So five divided by two gave me my 2.5. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it fit that right? Yeah, let's see what that 2.5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the stuff you are sort of going to do on your homework. Is playing with that. This is what y'all can do with the so, standard deviation. So we took half of that. Okay, so the percent I know would be left to be five percent. Uh, so let me draw that. Yeah. Well, I got the first. I know I did wrong in the first step. Mm -hmm. I went the wrong. Way. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. So we had our bell curve, right? Mm -hmm. And your mean, median, mode all should be sitting right in the middle. Now, at one standard deviation, either way, is four. Mm -hmm. So, if you're using your, hey, hit, hit similar exercises. And we'll okay, do another. Because okay. you missed that, and we need to get one fixed. So it should be similar. Okay, similar question. Okay. 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 It says four. Let me see. No. Okay, it can be the same thing. But that's the score of the psychology exam were normally disputed at the means of 68. 68 this time. And a deviation of 10. So standard deviation equals 10. And the family exam was anything two or more standard deviations. So it's the same the as two. So all the means. Mm -hmm. So here's my mean at 68. So if you take off one standard deviation, which is 10, it's going to put this at A. 58, right? If I go two standard deviations, and I'll go both ways, so this would be a 78. Two standard deviations will put me at a 48 and an 88. So two standard deviations, my cutoff score would be 48 this time. So I put a 48 on part A. That should be good check mark. So what percentage failed? So remember, we said that between here and here was the 95% of my data. So y'all, if 95% of your data is in between, that means these two tails only hold 5% of your data. And since they're symmetric, to see how much is in each one, you would take 5% divided by 2. So you'll have 2.5% in this tail and 2.5% in that. And then remember, all they said was, hey, what percentage failed only? So that would be the 2.5. Okay, so that's sort of some of the questions they're going to hit y'all with on that homework. Just to see if y'all got an idea of the 68, 95, 99 percent. I, I, I understand. See, I was going. I, I don't know why I was going, going backwards when I was doing math. That's um, all right. That's all right. That's what homework's for. So y'all can fix y'all's mistakes. Right? I can fix nothing. So y'all online, I guess that's a wrap for the day. So we'll be back on uh, Thursday and doing this again. So hopefully these zooms are helping y'all more than me just sending videos out.
Because some of them videos I have to use or someone else talking. I see when you, I've seen one of your videos on uh, when you get it's mm -hmm. what you do. So I'm going to stop the share and then I'm going to stop our meeting and I will see y'all Thursday. All right, I got a thumbs up. So y'all have a good one. <laughs>